Did you know that some of the smallest inhabitants of your garden, snails and slugs, are far more fascinating and useful than you might imagine? Although often considered pests, these creatures play crucial roles in the health and balance of your ecosystem. From their ability to break down organic matter and enrich the soil to their amazing methods of communication and defense, there is much to learn about these mollusks. In this video, we'll reveal surprising tidbits and practical tips for managing snail and slug populations in your garden in a sustainable way. Discover what they look like and how these creatures can improve soil structure, help recycle nutrients and, with the right methods, how you can enjoy a vibrant, healthy garden without resorting to harsh chemicals. Welcome Plantastics to an exciting journey through the amazing world of snails and slugs. Let's get started. Did you know that snails and slugs belong to the family Gastropoda? This family includes more than 60,000 species of mollusks found in a variety of habitats, from the sea and rivers to forests and gardens. What is the difference between snails and slugs? Although both belong to the same family, the most notable difference is that snails have a spiral shell that provides protection, while slugs have lost or reduced the shell over the course of their evolution, developing a protective mantle instead. What does their body look like? Snails and slugs have a body divided into three main parts, the head, the foot and the shell or mantle. The head, they have highly sensitive tentacles on their heads, which allow them to detect odors, vibrations and, in some cases, light. Snails and slugs have two pairs of tentacles. The upper tentacles have eyes at their ends, while the lower tentacles are used for sniffing. Their mouths, equipped with a structure called a radula, are used for scraping and consuming food. The foot. The foot is a muscular structure they use to move. In snails, the foot adheres to the surface and glides with undulating contractions, while in slugs, the foot extends and contracts to move forward. The mucus they secrete reduces friction and facilitates movement. The shell or mantle. A snail's shell is a spiral structure that provides them with protection and mineral storage. Slugs, on the other hand, have lost or reduced the shell in their evolution, developing instead a protective mantle. This mantle may contain a small internal plate that provides some degree of support. What do they eat? Snails and slugs have a varied diet and play a crucial role in ecosystems as decomposers and herbivores. They are primarily omnivores, meaning that their diet includes a variety of foods of both animal and plant origin. They consume leaves, fruits, fungi, and even carrion and excrement. What roles do they play in their society? Although they do not live in organized societies like ants, snails and slugs play important roles in their environment. They act as decomposers, helping to recycle organic matter and enriching the soil. They also serve as prey for a variety of predators, including birds, mammals, and other invertebrates. How do they communicate? Snails and slugs communicate through chemical and tactile signals. 
They use their tentacles and mucus to transmit information about roots, food and dangers. The mucus they leave behind may contain pheromones that inform other individuals of their presence and status. Did you know that some snails have venom? Cone snails, of the genus Conus, are famous for their potent venom. These marine snails inhabit tropical and subtropical waters around the world. How do cone snails use their venom? Cone snails use a modified harpoon-like tooth, known as a radula, to inject venom into their prey, which are usually fish, worms or even other mollusks. The venom contains a complex mixture of toxins that can quickly paralyze prey. Did you know that the venom of some cone snails can be lethal to humans? Although the stings of most conus species cause only pain and discomfort, some species, such as conus geographus and conus textile, can be fatal to humans due to the toxicity of their venom. What are the functions of their tentacles? The tentacles of snails and slugs are essential for detection and exploration. They can identify food and avoid predators thanks to their advanced sensory capabilities. Did you know that snails have microscopic teeth? A snail's mouth contains a structure called a radula, which is covered with thousands of tiny teeth. These teeth are used to scrape and grind food. A snail can have up to 14,000 teeth in its radula, and the teeth are constantly being replaced as they wear down. On to more interesting trivia. Did you know that some snails and slugs can regenerate parts of their bodies? Just as some lizards can regenerate their tails, certain snails and slugs have the ability to regenerate lost body parts, including tentacles and, in some cases, even their shells. This ability to regenerate is crucial to their survival in hostile environments. How do they breathe? Unlike snails, which have a shell into which they can retract, slugs have a more exposed respiratory system. Most land slugs breathe through a small hole on the right side of their mantle called a pneumostome, which opens and closes to allow air in and out. Did you know that snails can engage in migratory behavior? Some aquatic and land snails migrate to find better food sources or to reproduce. For example, the marine snail Litterina littoria migrates to deeper water during the winter. What is the life expectancy of a snail? The life expectancy of a snail varies depending on the species. Some small snails live only one or two years, while larger species such as the apple snail, Pomatia maculata, can live up to 10 years or more under favorable conditions. Many species of snails and slugs are hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both male and female reproductive organs. During mating, they can exchange sperm with their partner, and both individuals can fertilize their own eggs. This increases their chances of reproduction in environments where encounters with other individuals may be rare. How do snails defend themselves against predators? In addition to their protective shells, snails can produce toxic or unpleasant mucus to deter predators. The mucus of snails and slugs not only facilitates movement, but also plays a role in communication, protection against dehydration and defense against predators. Some species may produce toxic or unpleasant mucus to discourage predators. 
Did you know that snails can hibernate underwater? Some freshwater snails, such as those in the genus Viviparus, can enter a dormant state during unfavorable conditions, such as drought. They bury themselves in the sediment at the bottom of the pond and reduce their metabolic activity until conditions improve. Did you know that snails and slugs play an important role in ecosystems? Speaking of the important role of snails and slugs in ecosystems, let's review their role in gardens and crops. How do snails and slugs contribute as natural decomposers? Snails and slugs act as decomposers in garden and crop ecosystems. They consume decaying organic matter, such as fallen leaves, dead plants and plant debris. By decomposing these materials, they help recycle nutrients and enrich the soil, which supports plant health and promotes more vigorous growth. How do snails and slugs improve the soil? By moving through soil and vegetation, snails and slugs help aerate the soil. Their feeding and moving activity creates small tunnels that allow better air and water circulation in the soil. This can improve soil structure and facilitate plant root penetration. Can snails and slugs help control other organisms in the garden? Yes, in some cases, snails and slugs can help control populations of certain types of fungi and algae in the garden. By feeding on these organisms, they can prevent their overgrowth and maintain an ecological balance in the garden. What challenges do snails and slugs present to gardeners? Although they play beneficial roles, snails and slugs can also be a pest in gardens and crops. They feed on tender leaves, shoots and fruits, which can cause significant damage to young plants and horticultural crops. Slugs and snails prefer moist conditions and can proliferate in gardens with frequent watering or in shady areas. What sustainable methods can be used to control snail and slug populations? To manage snail and slug populations in gardens and crops, sustainable control methods can be used. Physical barriers Placing copper barriers around plants can repel snails and slugs due to a reaction they have on contact with copper. Natural traps Use beer traps or fruit peels to attract and capture slugs and snails. These can be manually removed from the garden. Biological control Introducing natural predators such as birds, toads, hedgehogs and some insects can help keep snail and slug populations under control. Garden Maintenance Keeping the garden clean and free of plant debris can reduce the places where slugs and snails can harbor and breed. Did you know that the presence of snails and slugs can be indicative of a healthy garden ecosystem? Although snails and slugs are often considered pests, some specific species of garden snails are less destructive and can coexist with plants without causing significant damage. Furthermore, their presence in small numbers can be indicative of a healthy and balanced garden ecosystem.
So much for the curiosities of snails and slugs. We hope you like them. Keep exploring, stay curious, and remember, there is always more to learn in the green mysteries of our world. Thanks for joining us Plantastics, be sure to hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to our channel, so you never miss a video. See you in the next episode.